When we say the great man, we should not forget one of the great men of this generation, meaning General Colin Powell. General Colin Powell was born on the 5th of April 1937 and died on the 18th of October 2021 due to the complications of COVID-19. Powell had his school education in a government school in New York. He was raised up in a tight-knit family and was taken off great care by his parents. That's pictures for General Powell in his youth. He's a well-disciplined, he was a well-disciplined kid with his friends here. Here the picture with his father and mother and his wife. He received bachelor degree in geology and started his first step in the army by receiving the commission as an army second lieutenant where he served in the army about continuously for 35 years when he retired on 1993 in the beginning of Bill Clinton's presidency period because of a dispute between the general and the president where Clinton intended to allow the gays to join the army where General Powell objected and finally retired due to this disagreement. During his service in the army he served in Vietnam in West Germany to organize the North Atlantic forces in West Germany during the Cold War. He served as military advisor for President Nixon. He served as national security advisor for President Ronald Reagan. During President Bush, the father, he was raised to a four-star general and soon next appointed to the post of the chairman of the Joint Chief Staff, which is the highest army post in the United States. He led and was the chief commander of the U.S. coalition forces in the Desert of Storm War. General Powell was a man of ethics and principles and well-behaved gentleman for a man who had spent 35 years as a warrior in the army. Here he is being awarded a medal by President George Bush the father after returning from the desert store. And here Mrs. Bush trying to help in uh, putting the medal around his neck. Very good. Very sweet reaction from General Powell. He used sometimes to make public speeches to the kids in schools and pupils in university to make them gain from his experience in life and strategy to go after this army is very very simple first we're going to cut it off and then we're going to kill his it. life journey how you talk when you come from a so that you, they would benefit from it here they are uploading his arrivals on every street corner with some pothead or junkie during a lecture he made to the kids or get others involved in it i didn't do it never in my life not even to experiment Two reasons. One, Here. my parents would have killed me. 
people are watching his speech. People ask, did you have a strong family life? I said, yeah, it was a powerful family. But we didn't sit around like the Brady Bunch at night talking about values. I just watched how my parents lived. And that's how values are passed on. They were very important to you. They were very important to me. Uh, very important. They, they gave you that foundation? I, I think so. There have been uh, racial barriers along the way. Racism still exists in this country. It is not something uh, in history. I have been uh, thrown out of, uh, of hot dog uh, stands in Georgia when I was a young captain just coming home from a year in Vietnam. So that still exists in this country. And the way I deal with it is I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you think about my background or whether I'm black and white and yellow. Uh, you're going to have to beat me, uh, as they say in basketball, in my face. During Powell's return from the desert storm, he was met with cheers and applauds that perhaps exceeded those that was General Eisenhower met with during his return from the Second World War. One of Powell's great mistakes was to join Bush, the son, Cheney team in invasion of Iraq in 2003. This war he tried to prevent in the beginning, but agreed to, to it after being supplied with fake investigatory reports. The thing which made him lose some of his popularity. That was very great, his popularity. My comment on the event of General Powers retirement ceremony. Most of us knew about <clears throat> the conflict between General Powell and Bill Clinton concerning allowing the gays to step into the army, after which General Powell decided to retire as Clinton intended to accomplish it and did not change his mind. It is actually a tradition that the chiefs in the U.S. Army are honored by the retirement ceremony before their leave. But as for General Power, the ceremony was a majestic one that had been prepared by the U.S. Army chiefs staff to meet with the position and greatness of the men, together with the great love the U.S. Army staff held for General Power. Now, if one watched the events of the ceremony more carefully, we could notice the short, formal, and perhaps a bit stiff talks between General Powell and Clinton that did not show any signs of friendship as those that existed between Colin Powell and Ronald Reagan and more between Colin Powell and President Bush, the father, and Mrs. Bush, whom he mentioned in his speech in his ceremony speech as as their being his friends while mentioned nothing of this sort regarding Bill Clinton who was obli obliged by protocol to attend the ceremony and recite a non-passionate speech about General Powell
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for retreat and to the color. General Colin L. Powell was appointed the 12th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff by President George Bush and assumed the role on October 3, 1989. The four years that followed marked one of the most historic chairmanships in the 50 years since the position was created and one of the most dramatic periods in modern American history. The Union was swept away. The threat of World War III and nuclear holocaust with which three generations of Americans had lived and worked was gone, vanished in a wave of freedom and democracy that reached from Budapest to Beijing. With its armed forces, at the same time our nation was fighting wars and responding to crises, General Powell and his colleagues on the Joint Chiefs of Staff were wrestling daily with the most dramatic restructuring of the nation's armed forces since World War II. Their goal was to preserve America's superb fighting forces while returning a well-deserved pizza's dividend to the nation's taxpayers. The task was challenging, complex, its context constantly changing as the post-Cold World War continued to evolve. Nevertheless, a new national military strategy was devised. A new force structure was created and the downsizing was begun. Proof of the outstanding results of this historic effort stands before us today, the magnificent men and women of today's armed forces. Men and women such as these have been busy throughout the world. In the aftermath of the Gulf War, they fed thousands of Kurds in the hills of northern Iraq. In Bangladesh, they were sea angels when typhoons ravaged the land. In Hawaii and in southern Florida, they brought food, water, security, and shelter to American citizens when hurricanes devastated their states. They provided food and medicine to the former Soviet Union. They flew relief missions into Sarajevo and are still doing so today. They also patrolled the streets and villages of Somalia helping to bring humanitarian aid to that war-torn nation. And of course, they manned the watchtowers of freedom from Germany to Japan and from Panama to the Persian Gulf. Please be seated.
Please be seated. General Colin L. Powell was appointed the 12th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff by President George Bush and assumed the role on October 3, 1989. The four years that followed marked one of the most historic chairmanships in the 50 years since the position was created and one of the most dramatic periods in modern American history. In the months following General Powell's appointment, the Berlin Wall fell. Freedom General Powell's service to the nation has spanned more than 35 years. Coming to warrior, spoken when, like you, he was finishing one journey and beginning a second. John Bunyan wrote in Pilgrim's Progress of the warrior valiant at the end of his life as he prepared to present himself to the Almighty, my sword I give to him that shall succeed me in my pilgrimage, and my courage and skill to him that can get them. Ladies and gentlemen, General Powell. President and Mrs. Clinton, Vice President and Mrs. Gore, President and Mrs. Bush, Vice President and Mrs. Quayle, Justices of the Supreme Court, Secretary Aspen and members of the Cabinet, Service Secretaries, members of the Diplomatic Corps, my fellow Chiefs of Defense who have traveled from afar to be here, my dear friend Phil Marshall Vincent, the chairman of the Military Committee of NATO, my fellow members of the JCS and the commanders in chief of the Armed Forces of the United States who are here today, distinguished guests, members of my beloved family, friends old and new, but all treasured, men and women of the Armed Forces of the United States represented so magnificently by the Joint Forces Honor Guard before you. I express my sincere thanks to each and every one of you for being here to share my final day in uniform. The Army has officially advised me that for record purposes I have served 35 years, 3 months, 21 days, and as we say in the infantry, a wake-up. I loved every single day of it, and it's hard to leave. It is made easier by your presence. Mr. President, Secretary Aspen, I thank you for your very, very kind words and your presence here today, as well as the great honor you do to me, Mr. President, by awarding me the Medal of Freedom. Days at CCNY, I remember cold nights in Korea and Germany with a sergeant coming along to offer me a hot cup of coffee. I remember miserably hot and terrifying days in Vietnam. I remember the warmth and pleasance of family reunions between assignments or coming home from overseas. I remember meeting Alma for the first time. I remember the memory of the birth of each of our three wonderful, perfect children, and the birth of a treasured grandson. I remember the thrill of moving from post to post, the excitement of working in the White House during historic times, the exhilaration of Operation Desert Storm. 
the faces of old friends and former commanders and fellow soldiers and family members have been marching by in a steady cadence for the last several days. I especially see the faces of comrades, comrades in arms who gave their lives in service to this country. I see the faces of those who trained me, those who disciplined me, those who inspired me, those who... Goodbye, and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, General Sullivan. Headquarters, Department of the Army, Washington, D.C., 30 September, 1993. The following General Officer of the United States Army is hereby retired. General Colin L. Powell, the United States Army and its soldiers are honored by General Powell's distinguished service.